Hello, this is the tutorial for the advanced mode of Auto Clicker. In advanced mode, you can use a combination of eight components or blocks to create your own automatic loop. Let's create something and see how it works. First, let's add a click block. With this block, you can choose to click one of the mouse buttons and specify the click type. The single click, double click, and hold click types work exactly as they do in standard mode. The drag type simulates holding the mouse button while moving the cursor. You can click the Pick Drag Path button to record the movement. The Execute Drag in Parallel option prevents the drag action from stopping the clicker during its duration, allowing you to use other functionality, like pressing keys if properly set up. The Down option simulates pressing and holding the mouse button, requiring another click block with the Up option to simulate the release. This is useful for running other blocks while the mouse button remains pressed. The location can be set to the mouse cursor or a fixed point. You can also choose whether the cursor moves for the click. We offer an option to gradually move the cursor to the target position, allowing you to set a delay for the cursor to reach the desired location instead of moving instantly. The relative position can be toggled between clicking on a point on the screen or a point within a window. Choosing the window option allows you to move the window freely while maintaining the same relative click position. The random offset option can add or subtract a few pixels from the point location before clicking, adding some randomness to the action. Now, let's pick a point and set up our click. Now, let's add an interval block this adds an interval in which the clicker will do nothing. This is extremely important to make so the clicker don't just spam the mouse buttons. It's also important to give some time for a window to pop up or for a loading to happen. You can also use the offset to make a random interval range, just like in standard mode. Let's use a 20 millisecond interval. With this, the clicker should already work. But before starting, we need to change the mode to advanced in this arrow button in the corner. Let's start the clicker and see it working. Good. Let's test more components. We are going to add a repeat block now. The repeat block will either repeat what is inside until you stop the clicker or for a specific amount of times. In advanced mode, you always have one repeat block on the outside, which represents the entire loop. Let's set it to repeat 30 times. We'll also add a key block, which is used to execute a key press. If the cursor needs to be in a specific position for the key press, you can set it to a fixed location. Otherwise, leave it at the cursor's current location. The default mode is Key Press, where you can specify the duration for which the key will be held. The up and down options function the same way as they do in the click block. By default, the key press duration is set to 10 milliseconds. The inner blocks option is used if you want to press a key for the entire duration of all the blocks inside the key block. This is useful in a situation where you want to hold a specific key while doing other actions, like holding shift and executing clicks while shift is pressed. Once the clicks stop, the key will release as well. We won't use that option for now, Let's change the key to Shift plus A to make an uppercase A. Let's add a click on the description box to make it click there before pressing the A key and also add a one second interval before repeating the process. I'll set everything to repeat three times. Let's see what happens. Good. Let's check the custom block now. We created this nice loop, but we might want to save it to reuse later. We can use custom blocks for that. We don't have any custom blocks yet, so we'll create one first. Let's name it Custom Tutorial. To edit the custom block, you can click on the Edit Blocks button and drag the components. Since we already created them before, let's drag them directly inside the custom block. 
Click on the custom block to expand it and start dragging everything inside it. Done. Now we can reuse the custom block anytime we want. Let's set the repeat to one time and use three custom blocks instead. It should work the same as before. In the Custom Blocks tab, you can check all blocks that you created before. We can also add things to run in parallel loops by adding another tab in the plus button. In this tab, I'll just add a click and interval to make it repeatedly click on another location, while the same loop we were executing before is happening. Let's test it. Good. Let's remove everything now and test the detection block. For the detection block, we can choose an image to look for on the screen. If the image is found, the blocks on the green zone will be executed. Otherwise, it will be the blocks in the red zone. We have the Region of Interest option and the Resize Factor option to increase the processing speed, just like in standard mode. We can also set a specific number of tries to find the image in the screen. If you put a click block inside the detection block, a new option is available, which will click on the detected location. Usually you will use it, like in this example, to click on the image, but you could also press a key or do anything else. Let's test it. Now we will change the image and add a click block if the image is not found, which will click in another location. Let's test again. Let's test the scroll block now. The scroll block simulates mouse wheel scrolling. You can choose the scroll direction and distance. Additionally, you can move the cursor to a desired location, just like in the click and key blocks. Let's add a scroll down and a scroll up with some intervals and then test it. Let's test the random block now. The random block executes one of its inner blocks at random. This is useful for setting up multiple click locations randomly. Let's test it. The last feature in advanced mode is the macros. With macros, you can assign a custom block to be executed when you press a key. This can happen regardless if the clicker is running or not. Let's assign the custom blocks we created before to the space key. To enable or disable the usage of macros, you need to press the F9 key. The green circle in the bottom left corner indicates that macros are enabled. You can edit the key in the Configuration tab if you want to. Let's test the macro. By default, macros will run simultaneously if you keep pressing the key. This could be problematic in some cases. If you want to block simultaneous executions, you can unmark the checkbox. There's also an option to execute the macro while you are holding the key and once you release the key, the macro will stop. These are all the features on advanced mode. Thank you for watching.